So I want to take a quick minute to discuss my 2018 Ford F-150. This is an XLT 302A package, four wheel drive, FX4. It was built in the Michigan plant. <clears throat> really pretty truck. Really, really pretty truck. But I want to go over a few issues that you may or may not know about these trucks. <clears throat> so let's take a look inside. Again, gorgeous truck. Plenty of room. <clears throat> For documentation purposes, this truck was built in August of 2018. <clears throat> you have to forgive me, my allergies are pretty crazy here in the state of South Carolina. So let's look. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to. on for this as you can see we have 487 miles <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so the first issue and I don't know if you can see it is right here and if you kind of step back or get back a little further and look the dash is warped <clears throat> Consumers have been complaining about this since 2015. It is now 2018, and even the 2019s are obviously out. And Ford continues to put these dashes in these vehicles. <clears throat> now, recently a TSB or Tech Service Bulletin came out regarding the dash. If it shows the warping like this, <clears throat> along with the visible opening under the windshield wiper <clears throat> and I hope you can see that it's not very bad on this truck <clears throat> Ford will replace the dash several thousand dollar part per the tech service bulletin over seven hours who wants a brand new truck with a ripped out dash not me <clears throat> issue number two this trim piece right here in this corner it rattles like someone is taking a stick and tapping it on the dash I've tried to play with it manipulate it <clears throat> excuse me no luck this piece here So far, we have the warp dash, the trim piece. Now let's get to the bigger issues. <clears throat> Close the door. <clears throat> when this truck is moving and I'm driving it between about 1600 RPM and 1900 RPM, there is a hellacious whistle and whine under acceleration. <clears throat> you can hear it with the windows down. It completely ruins ownership of this truck. Completely. So that's a, a lot. Of, that RPM range is where a lot of us drive, you know, especially if you're trying to save gas to kind of take it easy. But in order to avoid those RPMs and forego the whistle, you have to drive like a grandma. Not fun. So I have been unable to determine if it's from the transmission, the 10 speed, or if it's coming from the engine, the air box, intake, something along those lines, but it is very, very reminiscent of a turbo, especially a turbo diesel, or, you know, an EcoBoost, whatever. <clears throat> but an, an, a 5.0 liter does not have a supercharger and it does not have a turbo. So I'm wondering why this has such a high pitch whistle that is literally ear piercing. Drive through a drive through, drive through a parking lot close to a building and it will embarrass you. <clears throat> and if you guys are wondering what this is, 
This is something that you can use to just go over your windows and clean off any smudges or anything. So I know that some of you might ask, hey, what is that in your door? <clears throat> Last but not least, <clears throat> and the most concerning thing of all, you guys saw less than 500 miles. <clears throat> this is the dipstick. Let me see if I can get it focused in. It is barely registering on the low mark. This truck is at least a quart to a quart and a half low on oil. The five liter engine, <clears throat> Ford recently released a tech service bulletin to do an oil consumption test. And if it uses too much oil, <clears throat> they will replace the engine. It's looking like that could be where I'm headed there. So again, this truck, $55,000. Hump on the dash. <clears throat> and just for proof, let's look here. So the the MSRP total, if I can get this to focus, is there. $54,495. F-150. So let's say that Ford takes care of the whistle. That very well could be a hydraulic pump in the transmission. Let's say they take care of the engine. Let's say they take care of the dash. What do I have? I have a $55,000 truck with the dash torn out, the transmission worked on, and a replaced engine. It's a gorgeous truck, right? Yes, it is. But I'm a real customer. <clears throat> I bought this brand new in South Carolina at the worst dealership in the state. They told me, I went in there to talk to them about these issues. They told me there was nothing they could do to help me. Their service department said there is no fix currently for the obnoxious whine and whistle. <clears throat> they don't want to do the oil consumption test. And honestly, I wouldn't trust them to put a dash in the truck. So <clears throat> for other anything, for documenting purposes, this is my brand new F-150. The best-selling vehicle in the United States and Canada. They sold over 900,000 of these. And I just wonder how many people have a warp dash. I wonder how many people are driving around with a quart and a half, two quarts or more oil. Especially during break-in. I wonder how many people don't roll the windows down and hear, don't hear the whistle and the whine. Oh, and I almost forgot, when you let off the gas, going really slow, you abruptly let off the accelerator, it rattles. It sounds like BBs in an aluminum can. <clears throat> so I want you to think twice before you buy one of these gorgeous trucks, because it is gorgeous. It rides good, drives pretty good. If you turn the radio all the way up, and you don't have to hear all of the noises and all of the things that Ford explains by a tech service bulletin to be normal operation or watch for this. So if you want to avoid having a brand new truck like me that potentially needs an engine, who knows what's going on with the transmission with a warped dash 
which again, the way to tell is to look right through there. And this one is not very bad yet, but it is showing signs. <clears throat> Avoid buying one of these trucks. I think they rushed the release of the 10 speed transmission. I think they completely destroyed the reliability when they did the plasma bore liner. And honestly, the oil consumption is probably the fact that the piston re pistons and rings cannot seal because it's too hard. So it's experiencing oil blow by, which is oil consumption. I hope this video helps. I'm new to any kind of videos like this, so please forgive anything, any errors. And if you've experienced any of these issues, please leave a comment below so I know I'm not alone. Thank you and God bless from South Carolina.